Woody's Workshop. Life's an everyday adventure. That's my philosophy. Today was filled with excitement and anticipation. It was only midday, yet I felt I had already experienced a week's worth of adventures, at least in my mind. At breakfast, my father said he would have a surprise for me in the afternoon. My mind raced all morning imagining what it might be. At lunchtime, I could barely eat. Finally, my father said with a grin, Molly, let's go for a ride. Does this have anything to do with the surprise, I asked. My toes were tingling in my moccasins, so I already knew the answer. We hopped on our bikes and pedaled down our street, then left onto Maple Street, then right onto Magnolia Street, and then left onto Elm Street. I had never been down Elm Street. So cool. I was already happy with what I thought was a wonderful adventure when we stopped at an old barn. The sign read, Woody's Workshop. Woody, an old friend of my parents, was one of my favorite people in the world. He not only repairs furniture, but he climbs mountains in faraway places, dines with kings and queens in magnificent castles, and even lived in a hot air balloon. His stories always tickle my imagination, but I had never been to Woody's workshop. You're looking lovely, Miss Molly. Very grown up, Woody said as he knelt down to give me a big hug. Thank you, Woody. You look grown up too, I responded smiling. It turned out that Woody was in on the surprise. My father explained that we would spend the afternoon with Woody repairing an old chair of my grandmother's. It was going to be a gift for my mother. You ready for some work, Miss Molly? Woody asked. Absolutely, I replied. Woody's workshop was filled with more pieces of furniture than I had ever seen in my whole life. There were couches, tables, dressers, cabinets, and chairs, all in various states of repair. I lightly touched some velvet on a beat-up old couch. A big cloud of dust exploded in my face. Ah, chew! Woody asked me to get a wet rag from the work sink. I wound my way through the maze of furniture, tools, and fabrics. I wanted to wander more, but there was work to be done. I found the sink, dampened a cloth, and returned to Woody and my father. Where did you get all this stuff, Woody? I asked. This stuff, as you call it, is my lifelong collection of furniture from all my travels around the world. I've had to learn about when and where they were built, and for whom and what use. If you wipe the dust off your grandmother's chair, I'll tell you what I know about it. As I did what he asked, Woody spoke slowly and thoughtfully while carefully gluing and clamping a leg back into place. This beautiful chair is not quite a hundred years old, so cannot truly be called an antique, but it is special and valuable. It is from a design period in the early 1900s called Art Deco. What about that fancy couch over there? I asked. Woody walked over and sat down in the ornate but dusty couch. This couch has quite a history. Couches have history? I asked, astounded. Oh, yes, all furniture has history, and a place of origin, and often a special use. Look at the fabric on this couch. They only made that kind during the 1800s in Paris. And that dresser in the corner? Its sleek design was only popular in Denmark. And here is a wonderful old table from Japan that was used only for tea ceremonies. You can see they only used wooden nails, not metal ones, and the painted design is of a Japanese garden scene. These are all very valuable pieces. My father, who was quietly retouching the paint, said, Sometimes a piece of furniture has monetary value, but what makes it really special is its emotional value. He continued with an example. Your mother loves this chair because your grandmother used to read bedtime stories to her from it. As we waited for the glue to dry, I asked Woody how he kept all the countries and dates and designs straight. My head was spinning with all the new things I was learning. 
I've been working with furniture for a very long time, and I love it. Somehow, when you care about something that deeply, it's easy to remember, and the pieces of information all fit together, just like a puzzle. He explained with a grin on his wise face. My grandmother's chair was nearly ready. As we cleaned up, Woody told us another fantastic story about his great-grandfather, who was the personal furniture designer for a king. The king wanted to be remembered for all time, so Woody's great-grandfather designed a unique chair for him. To this day, it is known as the Chair of Kings. Do you have one of those fabulous chairs? I asked with hope. You're sitting in one, Woody said without looking up. I immediately hopped up from the chair to check it out. As I inspected all of the elegant details, I realized it was truly special, but maybe not quite as special to me now as my grandmother's chair. My grandmother's fixed-up old chair was now fit for a queen. My mother will be so excited. Now, whenever I look at an old piece of furniture, I'll wonder what its history might be, what king or queen had designed it, or simply what interesting person used it. Molly Moccasin's Everyday Adventurer